Dear colleagues, the session organizers, thanks for having me. And hopefully I can contribute to the topic uh, with a small presentation from our la latest uh, research in Klein Klein in Austria and Styria. So we are not staying all the time in the cold north, we are going to the cold south. Um, I'm taking you to the eastern, uh, or the southeastern Alps. Styria is uh, one of the uh, federal states of Austria. It consists of very heterogeneous uh, landscape. We have this upper Styria where we are really in this alpine area. Then it comes slowly to this uh, hill, uh, hilly uh, landscape to the south. And to the east, uh, there we have the Pannonian Plain of Hungary. We go south to Slovenia, and there's also the connection of Slovenia to Italy. In Styria, two famous Hallstatt period uh, sites uh, are uh, located. On one uh, side, we have Gross Clan or Klein Clan, which I will be talking today, with a famous mask in the hands. Then we have Streitweg, from, for those of you who uh, are dealing with Hallstatt period. Uh, this uh, cult chariot should uh, be very well known. And then, not very far, but in another federal state is Hallstatt. And as you can see, this, the sites are really like uh, on this way from the Hallstatt towards south, towards uh, uh, Italy. The area I will be talking about is dominated by two rivers. We have the river Trava in Slovenia and the Mura in uh, in Austria, that goes also in Slovenia, but mostly in the Austrian part. This is the site of Klein Clan. We have other uh, bigger settlements in the vicinity, like Vildon, Horachobel, or Bubenberg, and Postela. These are more or less uh, Hashtag period centers. And then we have a whole series of uh, satellite settlements. Uh, also interesting is that Klein Clan is one of the settlements that uh, wasn't really well protected and it has no wall. But at Königsberg, there is uh, a almost a fortress on the hill uh, which protects the access to these valleys uh, of the site. The settlement itself is uh, located on a uh, low hill composition between the rivers uh, Saga and Zulm. So it has a really nice uh, strategic position controlling uh, the landscape. It's a low peak, 450 meters above sea level. and um, this uh, area where the settlement is is called Burgstallkogel. The site is known because of around 700 burial mounds uh, that are tumuli that are still visible in the woods around. Uh, here in yellow are these uh, tumulo uh, graveyards, cemeteries, uh, as you can see, with some of the bigger tumuli and, uh, of course, a lot of the small tumuli in the village of Klein Klein, we have the four princely tumuli and that's uh, also the reason that the site is more known about uh, Klein Klein. Some of them are still uh, very well preserved, can be seen in the landscape. I think this is uh, something for an introduction and I would now go to, my, to our research of the last years. So actually everything began in 2013. Uh, we had in 2012, a storm that knocked a few trees over, and we got uh, finally the opportunity also to excavate in this uh, settlement area. Uh, this was not really something done for the first time. As you can see, all the red uh, spots are the trenches made by Klaus de Viat in the uh, 1980s. Uh, and we got the opportunity to excavate here ne nearly uh, nearby. Uh, one trench was made on the terrace and another one on the slope. So this is really in the northern part, well preserved in the woods, where we still have these uh, terraces that can be seen. In the following year, not yet exciting, we just connected the trenches, we got a better insight how this uh, landscape is changing, we got uh, a bit more of, of, of the settlement structure because our 
our trenches were a little wider, then Dobiatz, who just was looking for this chronological, typological view on the settlement. Uh, and what's for us important, we collected uh, very many uh, archaeobotanical samples, uh, which will be looked at in this uh, next year. Uh, we are starting in October a new EU project called <coughs> Paleodiversis Styria, where we will, do, uh, we will deal with a lot of botanical probes. Still not very exciting. Typically what you get in Styria when you're excavating a settlement, you get a lot of pits, you get a lot of post holes, and you get a ton of ceramics. From 2013 and 14, we got some really nice pieces that enable us to make a good uh, rotation in this harsher period. Um, not really, but not a really a uh, very exciting uh, find. Um, what was more interesting for us than really the small finds of the ceramics uh, is how the landscape or this settlement area changed. Uh, as we put our trenches on the today seen terraces and uh, on the slopes, we could uh, at least a bit see how these uh, terraces were made uh, in the Hushet period. So they didn't look like this, like really uh, slowly going down, but there were some uh, cut in uh, places and some prolongations of terraces, so really like with the wooden and uh, stone constructions. Everything changed actually in, in the year 2015. Uh, it was January uh, when the landowner uh, of this southern part called us that he wants to change or, or rebuild his own uh, old wine yard. Um, and it started with a two days job, just looking at the heavy digger, and it ended like in five weeks of excavations. So why it was only a two-day job plan planned is that's why, because this was over 100 years of vineyard, expectations to find anything here in this area were actually very, very low. This is, this is the top of the Burishal Kogel, where the main settlement is, and here in the south, it's, uh, it was, uh, it's really intensively used area. Uh, luckily, this digger wasn't really so. In Syria, when you go to the wine yard, you take a heavy digger. They, it just didn't go uh, deep at first, but just starting slowly with a few centimeters, and that was actually uh, luck because um, he uncovered a few small pieces of burnt clay and some ceramics, so initiated our excavation. And uh, very soon, it was clear that we are dealing with the ruin of a burnt uh, building partly disturbed by the wine yard, but uh, actually not so badly. The ruin uh, consisted of uh, burnt house clay and uh, charcoal ceramics. This is this part, like 20, 30 centimeters. And under, it, under this ruin, uh, three to five centimeters thick uh, clay floor uh, was uncovered. The floor was burned, very evenly dispersed on this terrace. This terrace was actually cut in this, uh, this limestone, uh, limestone area. In this uh, ruin action, we had a uh, few sh shards, we have uh, burned wall plaster, we have uh, remains of wooden construction, as you might see in this area. And uh, at the beginning, we thought very nice, we have a nice uh, staple of, of wood that was actually uh, prepared for the fireplace, even single beams could be identified. Um, um, this is something um, really for our area is really something special because most, as you can s see from 2013 Fortnite excavation, we don't really have much of organic remains that are almost uh, that are preserved. After this uh, beginning of this. Uh, uh, dig and this first uh, first results, the excavation could be prolonged, and we got the opportunity really to extend the excavation area. And uh, soon it was clear um, 
that uh, with this that we can actually excavate the whole building. So uh, because it will be covered, or it already is covered by the new wine yard, we got this opportunity to really uncover all all the walls. It showed uh, also very soon that um, in that part to the hill slope. Um, the wood was very well preserved. So our staple of wood wasn't staple, but it was actually part of this wooden uh, construction in the back of the hill. These few meters of wood, uh, almost for, if it, they were really burnt, uh, but still we got a few small hints or details on this uh, actually carpenter skills or wooden construction. On the southeastern wall, uh, there was not a lot of wood uh, preserved, but we got a whole layer of this uh, wall plaster in different forms. Many of them had this uh, triangular form, so we are really thinking about uh, uh, plaster put uh, between horizontal wooden beams. In summer, we could excavate the rest of the house uh, with really more detailed uh, wooden remains. Uh, we were all excited, of course, and um, again, we could identify single beams, single logs that um, I think collapsed <coughs> inside of, of the building. This is the part to the slope, so when the house is burning, the, it looks like the beams were collapsing inside. We tried dendro chronology at the University of Vienna, um, no real success, but we got at least uh, three trees identified. We have oak and fir tree. Along the walls, under the under these uh, uh, pieces of wood, we have big flat stones. <coughs> three could be in uncovered in situ. Uh, but I think we should be thinking about three more. Two, uh, this part couldn't be excavated <coughs> because it was on the, on the old wine yard. Uh, but I think we can say that we are dealing with a house actually not really big. We have like 4.5 meters long, 3 meters wide. Um, maybe a meter uh, is still uncovered, but uh, not uh, much more than that. The, for the, our datation at the moment, we have the ceramics. It would be something that we would uh, date in uh, Hashtag C period, uh, so 7th, 6th century BC. Um, so different pieces just to have an inside. The highlight of our excavation was this uh, moon-shaped fire dog. Uh, two pieces we preserved that, could, that fit together in one crescent. You see all those, also these three holes. And uh, similar fire dogs are, of course, known from other sites, especially from Switzerland. Maybe you're familiar with the <coughs> articles of uh, uh, Brunner Bossat and Kerner in Helvetia Archaeologica. Uh, where uh, some of these could be also interpreted as moon calendars. I won't go into details with this, but still I think it's a fascinating idea. And if we go continue with these fire dogs, we have uh, all these um, finds from the graves, especially in the Kalenderberg culture, where there is also a, an interpretation of a cultic uh, character of this uh, by Terjan and, and uh, Nevesik. Our fire dog uh, was discovered actually in the southeastern part of the building and was lying directly on the clay floor. So at first we thought there might be even a fireplace uh, beside it, but in this burnt ruin it was not possible really to identify uh, such uh, a thing. Uh, its exact location actually very close to the burnt wall here where the rest belong. Uh, of this uh, wall um, wouldn't really support the idea of a fireplace. If we look at the uh, in situ situation, we see two pieces, and it looks, for me at least, a bit as if this object uh, has fallen maybe from a higher position, maybe because it was also covered by this wall, maybe from a uh, higher position on the wall. Our spirit remains in southeastern Alps still now didn't offer us actually much of insight in the use of space. We have here at 
with our find a really a good uh, possibility to look how the space was used and um, it was burned out but still we got some some uh, very valuable information at the end um, I would maybe like uh, provoke a bit of a discussion with the idea I was thinking about in the last days um, so if we maybe accept this cultic character of this object and if we go uh, from that idea that it wasn't part of the fireplace but fallen from maybe a higher position on the wall because it was covered by this uh, rest pieces of wood uh, we might we might be also thinking about a small house shrine or altar similar as uh, we see till today so this is for, for me and thank you for your attention <laughs>